Now, I want to tell you that I think I have one of the most wonderful jobs in the world because I have a job that is in healing, but I'm not the healer. So all I need to do is to pray for the sick. <laughs> and if the sick don't get healed, it's, it's God who is the healer. And I know many of you say, oh, I cannot pray for the sick. I don't know what to say. Um, I'm going to teach you a few principles, but you know, the presence is everything. You don't even need to use words when the presence is there. Um, I was cycling once and, um, you know, I, I do the August every year and I was cycling and I was training and I was on a mission and I saw this guy on the side of the road limping and I thought, I'm sure I'm supposed to pray for him, but I'm not going to pray for him now. No, I'm on a mission. I'm just going to cycle. And I cycled a few meters and I thought, no, I better turn around. And reluctantly, I turned around. And I went to pray for him. I was sitting on my bicycle. And I said, would you, what's wrong? Why are you limping like that? No, he said he had bones under his feet, which were obviously spurs under his feet. So I sat on my bike and I spoke to the spurs. Jesus teaches us to speak to the I said, Spirit, in Jesus' name, you will shrink right now. Right now you shrink. And I said, how are you feeling now? <laughs> and he started walking along and he was absolutely healed. <laughs> so I want to say to you, was that me? No, it wasn't. It was just my obedience. And that's what God wants. The Great Commission is pray for the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, that is what we need to do, no matter what your profession is. Think of the Great Commission because that's what you need to, to, to be doing. I just want to start by our foundation. I'll tell you what I intend doing. We're going to start by our foundation of, of healing. And then I'm going to I'm going to talk if there is time. There might not be time for everything I've planned. I'm going to talk about how to pray for, for, for people. And then I'm going to be speaking about why people don't get healed and roadblocks to healing. And just ask questions if you don't understand. And then we're going to have a break of five minutes. And then I'm going to do an inner healing. I love inner healing because your body will only prosper as your soul prospers. I'm going to do inner healing and, you, and God will heal sovereignly. Anyone who has an ailment right now, can I ask you just to stand out of your chair and test your body because I'm really believing that God is going to heal you completely sovereignly. I was ministering in France. Just stand up and test your body. Wiggle your body around. Do something you couldn't do. Or, you know, do something that you can't. Try and do something you can't do. Because I really believe that God is going to be healing today. I want to tell you that um, I've, I've seen many, many, many. I've seen autism healed in a talk by the presence of God. This woman had severe autism. She had Asperger's disease, which is hectic. And the next day, she realized that she's actually completely healed. And she, her testimony is that she had it very badly. So if God can do that, he can do it again, and he can do it today. And I'm expecting him to do it today. So thank you, Lord, that you are breaking all mindsets because you are God. You are on the throne and we are not alone. You are God. Uh, in Acts 10.38, it's one of my favorite scriptures. It says, it speaks about, I'm just going to paraphrase, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth to go around and he healed everyone. He healed everyone. And in John 3.13, it speaks about the atonement for God did not send his son into the world, but that the world would be saved through him. God sent Jesus to us so that we can be saved through him. And then, of course, the Great Commission, that you will go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. That's why I said just now, it doesn't matter what your profession is. It doesn't matter what you do. Go out, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you receive and freely give. That is your mission. That is your mission. And that should flow so in your blood 
that no matter what you do, no matter where you are, that is what you must do. That is what you must do. And you know, Jesus didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick because we carry the Holy Spirit in us. And then, of course, in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Now, I want to say to you, what makes you doubt? What would ever make you doubt if those are God's words? Because his word is his will. And his will in his, is his word. So if God says he's the healer, he is the healer. The problem is here. The problem is here. The problem is here. Oh, Auntie Sally has cancer and the doctor says she's going to die. What absolute nonsense. Auntie Sally doesn't need to die because she's got cancer. I've seen cancer healed often, often, often. Who are you partnering with? The whole thing about healing is who are you partnering with? Are you partnering with the love of God? Are you partnering with his intentionality for Auntie Sally's destiny? Or are you partnering with the, with, the, with, with, with the devil? I just want to say right from the beginning, I am radical. And I, 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 I love doctors. I believe in doctors. Luke was a doctor. But you know, in the psalm, it says, sing a new song. Take the words that the doctor gives you and turn it into a song of praise to God. And you know what happens? He comes and he fights your enemy for you. That's what the Bible says. He comes and fights your enemy for you. If you're going to grumble because you're sick, who are you partnering with? Just remember, God is light and light, and the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We must always just remember that. Now, <clears throat> is it God's will to heal? 2,000 years ago, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth so that he can heal the sick. But you know, somehow people have changed words and changed mindsets and they think God has made so-and-so sick so that the family can come into the kingdom and so they can strengthen him. And It's almost as though God and the devil have changed roles. How can God anoint Jesus of Nazareth to come and give life and life abundantly, but yet God is putting sickness on people? It makes no sense. It's a divided house and makes absolutely no sense. And you know, one of my favorite scriptures is Matthew 4, 17, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus brought the kingdom. We speak about signs, miracles, and wonders. Yes, of course. But Jesus brought that. And if we're not going to believe what Jesus brought, we're actually going to lose out on what's right in front of us. Um, we seldom speak about the kingdom that Jesus came from. But what does the kingdom look like? In Matthew 6, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That verse is not speaking about the kingdom that we go to when we die, which is a, which is a, a true reality. It's speaking about living on earth as though it is in heaven. Heaven is our model. What happens in heaven? No sickness, no debt, no sorrow, no broken relationships. That is how we're supposed to be living here. And you know what? You can if you choose to. It's all about your choice. I'm going to be speaking about it later, but the biggest gift God has ever given man is free will. We can choose. We can choose to sin. We can choose not to sin. We can choose to be righteous. We can be intentional about anything we want to. How intentional are you to bring heaven to earth and to be heaven on earth? To be heaven and to meet what you carry. That's a, it's, it's a now reality. The kingdom of heaven is established in us. In, in Isaiah 64, it says, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are bringers of heaven to earth. I had the most wonderful <laughs> picture the other day. I said, God, give me, show me how I can, you know, I'm just simple. I love being simple and I... I I, 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 I just, because Jesus was simple. I mean, look at his stories that are complicated. They're all simple. 
And I said, just give me a picture of this living in heaven and being on earth. And he gave me the most wonderful picture of a long me. My head is in heaven. I think heavenly thoughts, kingdom thoughts. I only live out of it. I try. I'm not perfect. I try. I live in heaven. I try and only have heavenly thoughts. But my feet are down walking out my heaven's reality in my head, walking it out on the earth. I've got my feet on the devil. You all have your feet on the devil. Father, just let this become a reality to them. A reality, a reality, a reality to them. They have the feet on the devil. You don't need to know his name. You don't need to know his name. Just clap him, man, and he'll go. You know, Sir Praise Sir Tolly says, when, one day when you get to heaven, you'll see that the devil is just a little green frog in the corner. He's just a nothing. So there's no sickness, no sorrow, no fear, nothing in like that in, in, in heaven. And even, as I said, heaven is our model. Um, I was sitting in, the, in, a, in a coffee shop with my husband. I have the most wonderful husband on the world, in the world. I want to honor him because he allows me to do what I do. And I have his blessing and he's just awesome. But he's not quite as radical as I am. We were sitting having coffee in a coffee shop. And I saw a guy walking past on crutches. <laughs> and you know it, I couldn't help myself I tapped the man on the shoulder I said what's wrong with your foot it was over the Christmas season and he said now, I think I drank too much red wine because I got gout so I said to the gout gout you go now in Jesus in, in Tashas you go now in Jesus name I said how's your foot now <laughs> He gave his son his crutches and he just walked off. <laughs> and you know, that is, that is heaven. That is heaven. We have to live like heaven. We can't live like nat with our natural minds. We have to change, Lord, change their minds. Supernatural minds, Lord. Heaven's thinking. Heaven's reality, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, look at Jesus when he was in the boat. The disciples said to Jesus, oh, we're going to drown. You couldn't even care about us. Jesus just said, storm be storm. Because that is the reality that he came from. He did not know storm. And that is what heaven's reality is like. There's no storm in heaven. There's only peace. Now, what makes you accept the storm? Your natural mind. Change your thinking. Repent means to change the way you think. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And as I said previously, if you're not going to accept that Jesus brought that on earth, he brought that to us, you're going to lose out. You're going to lose out. That same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That exact same Holy Spirit lives in you. I always, I often think, how does God feel about what I'm doing? And I often cry. I often, often, often cry when I think of God's love for me. I, I'm going to cry now. He loves you so much. What makes you not believe him in you? You see, Jesus, when he walked when he walked on earth, he had an outward ministry, like I'm speaking to you. But when he died, he sent the Holy Spirit to live in you. That Holy Spirit in you is teaching you more about Jesus. He's teaching you more about Jesus. Now, if you're not going to believe these things, I think I'm insulting that Holy Spirit. That's Carol. You might not think that. But I think that, and I just want to say, God yearns for you to think like he thinks. He just yearns for you to think like he thinks. Okay, let's make a declaration. Say after me. I live in heavenly places. I am a bringer of heaven's reality to earth. There is no sickness where I come from. I 
I have my feet on the devil. Yay! <laughs> Excuse me. You know, the more I spend time with God and the more I have a quiet time and the more I connect with his love for people, the more I yearn to hunger and uh, the more I hunger for just to know him better and, 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 and to get hold of his heart to see people healed. 